You might be wondering what foods to eat on an elimination diet, especially if you're suffering with IBS or other digestive issues. Ooh. In this video, I'm gonna share with you a specific elimination diet created for a family member who took an MRT food sensitivity test. The results were super surprising. And as a personal chef, I have a lot of experience with creating customized meal plans for people on special diets. Since everyone will have different results with food sensitivity tests, this meal plan is just an example of how creative you can get with a somewhat limited list of ingredients to choose from. The eating plan is the most restricted in the first seven to 10 days, but there are lots of different food categories to choose from so we could easily create a nice menu. Fortunately, an elimination diet will actually help you to ultimately eat a broader variety of food. So the goal is not to eat in a restricted way or eat a limited number of foods. Based on the food sensitivity test result, we were able to make delicious dishes like salmon with scallions and lime juice, quinoa rice pasta tossed with a little olive oil and sea salt, and then some broccoli, lots of different vegetable options. An elimination diet finds the foods that are causing you inflammation and discomfort, and you temporarily avoid them and then gradually reintroduce foods a little at a time. As a certified health coach, I qualified to be able to sign up as a practitioner through Oxford Biomedical Technologies, and my first client was a family member. When we got back the test results, it also included this comprehensive guidebook with a personalized plan known as a LEAP protocol. LEAP stands for Lifestyle, Eating, and Performance. I couldn't believe some of these results. Some things you'd expect, like a sensitivity to food colorings like red food dye, green food dye, okay. But maple syrup? That was a shocker. How about being sensitive to pears? Corn, okay, that's another understandable sensitivity. A lot of people probably react to corn and wheat and dairy. Those were all not surprising, but I was really surprised about the maple syrup, pears, black beans, chickpeas. In the test results, you can see the reaction level of your immune system to 176 different food chemicals and foods. Another nice thing is that they provide you with this little handy card. You can carry it around in your pocket, take to restaurants, and make sure that you're avoiding the foods that are in the red or the yellow because these are major food sensitivities. Days one through seven are the most restrictive. The purpose of this is to reset your immune system with the least inflammatory foods, foods that your body definitely does okay with. These test results included 28 different foods to choose from. There were five different proteins, a nice assortment of grains and vegetables, some fruits, and enough interesting ingredients to really put together some good recipes. Out of those foods, we didn't end up using eight of them. You might think this could be a very boring diet and potentially limiting, but we were able to come up with delicious menus that were satisfying and tasty. Let me show you what some of those meals were. Besides the salmon, pasta, and broccoli, we were also able to make turkey burgers, a hearty mung bean stew with coconut milk and pumpkin. We rounded out this meal with a little bit of some cooked asparagus, some white rice, and a little bit of chicken. Some of the allowable vegetables in the plan were asparagus, pumpkin, and cabbage. So I made this delicious tender Napa cabbage. For starches, we made white rice, red rice, black rice, all the rices. And we could also make dishes using quinoa. So I combined quinoa with some allowable vegetables like the pumpkin and leeks and cooked it with some homemade chicken broth. And you gotta have dessert, so I made some poached apples with cardamom and coconut sugar. They were so delicious, and we topped them off with a little coconut ice cream. Again, this is just an example of what we did with this particular set of results, but they're gonna be different for each person. As a personal chef, I always love the challenge of working with different diets. I would have clients over the years say, I'm allergic to this or that, or I'm on the keto diet, or I'm vegan or macrobiotic, whatever the diet was and the plan was, it was always a creative challenge to piece together menus that are satisfying and delicious. And that's what we did here. So I wanted to share with you a little bit more details about how I made these 12 different recipes that were part of this phase one, one week menu, starting with the quinoa, which I cooked in bone broth, a ratio of one cup of quinoa to two cups of homemade chicken bone broth. 
I added a pinch of sea salt, one half cup of chopped pumpkin, one half cup of chopped scallions, and a couple tablespoons of chopped leeks. The flavor was amazing. It cooked for about 15, maybe 20 minutes, and it was so tender and delicious. It also firmed up as it cooled, so it got this nice couscous texture. To make the white rice, we combined one cup of white rice with two cups of water and cooked it for about 15 minutes, which gave it a nice fluffy texture. Some of the rice was combined with coconut milk and coconut sugar and cardamom to make a sweet dessert. I made a savory version with some lime juice and coconut oil and sea salt. Earlier in the video, I mentioned some cooked vegetables, including asparagus, Napa cabbage, and a little bit of fresh pumpkin. So I'll walk you through how I made these vegetables in a very quick and easy way. I brought a big pot of water to a boil and added a little pinch of salt. And then I cooked the vegetables in the order of the most mild tasting and lightest color to the stronger taste and darker color. So first I cooked the Napa cabbage just for a minute or two in the boiling water and then took it out with a strained spoon to let it drain and cool. Then I brought the water back up to a boil and added my asparagus. I added another pinch of sea salt and I let the asparagus cook for about a minute or two until it was nice and fork tender. And you guessed it, I cooked the pumpkin in the same boiling water. Sometimes I even cook pasta in this boiling water after cooking all the vegetables. These vegetables came in handy as a side dish or even to keep on hand for snacking. And you can use the same technique to cook any vegetables that you like. For a little sweet treat, I cored a few apples and I placed them in a pan, sprinkled them with sea salt, add a cup of apple juice, and then I sprinkled them with a little bit of coconut sugar, or you could use honey. And then I added some ground cardamom. I brought the apple juice to a boil and then I reduced the heat to simmer on low, covered for about 30 minutes. Since cow's milk was a big sensitivity, we went with a coconut milk based ice cream not completely compliant with the meal plan, but a pretty clean ingredient, especially in the Cosmic Bliss brand. Texture-wise, the So Delicious brand was a little stiff compared with the Cosmic Bliss, but if you let it sit out at room temperature for a little while before serving, then it softens up nicely. We ended up going with the Cosmic Bliss just because it was a little creamier right out of the freezer. After cooking the apples for 30 minutes, they're ready to serve. I love to serve them warm. And then you can top them off either with the ice cream or even a little bit of coconut cream sweetened with a little coconut sugar. In addition to the cooked apples, I also made a fruit compote using apples and blueberries and a little bit of honey. This was really nice to serve with breakfast as a mild sweet treat. For a refreshing salad, I combined some thinly sliced apples with some very thinly sliced Napa cabbage and a little sea salt and lime juice. This made a really nice side salad to go along with our meals. For a beverage, I made an extra strong cup of peppermint tea, used two bags and steeped it for a while to get this nice tea concentrate. The idea was to add a little splash of this to a drink of water to just add a little flavor. And I sweetened it with a little bit of raw honey. Using these frozen salmon fillets, we made a delicious but simple salmon dish. I heated a tablespoon of virgin coconut oil in a fry pan over medium high heat, and then I added my salmon fillets and fried them for a couple minutes on one side before turning them and frying them on the other side. 
I seasoned them lightly with a little bit of sea salt. I added a generous sprinkle of some coconut sugar, some homemade chicken bone broth, and then I added a little bit of coconut aminos, which is like a soy-free soy sauce, spread that around on the salmon, and added some fresh sliced scallion, and a squeeze of lime juice. Simple flavors, I was going for a teriyaki type of sauce. I covered the fillets and let them cook for a few minutes until it was easily flaked with a fork. Since both rice and quinoa were allowable grains on this meal plan, this gluten-free quinoa brown rice pasta was perfect. I just cooked it in boiling water according to package directions. Leftover pasta came in really handy one night for dinner, cooked with some ground turkey. To make a cardamom chicken, I chopped up a bunch of vegetables. I had two cups of mixed chopped veggies that I put underneath the chicken and then sprinkled it with some sea salt. I put it in the pot of my Instant Pot. And I kept the seasoning kind of simple with just some sea salt and then drizzled it with some olive oil. I placed some sliced lime on the chicken and then I added a little bit of cardamom, probably only a teaspoon. This gives it a nice peppery touch. I drizzled it with some raw honey. I probably could have melted this to soften it a little bit. I put a few teaspoons on top. Then I added a half cup of sliced green scallions, placed the whole pot in my instant pot, and I added one cup of homemade chicken bone broth, and one cup of water. I placed the lid on top and locked it into place, and then set the slow cooker for eight hours. After eight hours, your chicken will be finished and should read 165 degrees Fahrenheit with a food thermometer. Mung beans were another protein option listed on our meal plan, so I picked up these sprouted mung beans. They're supposedly more digestible and they cook up really quickly. I made these into a mung bean stew, combining them with a little bit of coconut milk and pumpkin puree. It was really simple and I like these brands of coconut milk. They don't contain any guar gum, just plain and simple ingredients. I didn't get to film the making of this recipe, but I'll put the ingredients and instructions below the video. Everybody loves a good burger, so we made turkey burgers with one pound of ground turkey, a teaspoon of sea salt, a tablespoon of coconut sugar, one half cup of chopped scallions, and a teaspoon of apple butter, which is just made from pure cooked apples. I also added a teaspoon of coconut aminos, which is our soy-free soy sauce, and three-fourths of a cup of cooked white rice. I mixed this together really well and then formed this into four large burgers. These were pretty big burgers to fry, so I would recommend actually making six smaller burgers. Cook the burgers for three to five minutes on each side until they're done through the center. These were really a hit. They came out so delicious. I served them with a sauce made from apple butter, coconut aminos, and a little coconut sugar and lime juice. It was way better than ketchup. Plus, it was compliant with our LEAP guidelines. To go with the burgers, I made a little simple boiled broccoli. You could steam this, saute it, make it any other way that you like. I just happen to love boiled vegetables. They get so soft and tender. People sometimes ask me, Christine, aren't you boiling away all the vitamins? No, you're not, because if you add a pinch of salt to the water, it helps to keep the vitamins and minerals intact. These little guys are the broccoli stems, by the way. I peeled them and sliced them, and they are really yummy. I'll end with a couple of fun grocery ingredients that I found, like these gluten-free breadcrumbs. It's hard to find a good quality breadcrumb that doesn't contain seed oils or 
something else that I don't want in the ingredients. This is literally just rice flour, raisin juice concentrate, some honey and salt. Since two of the allowed grains were rice and quinoa, these crackers are ideal. And you could easily top them off with a little bit of sauteed scallions and maybe some chopped up chicken. So if you enjoyed this video and you're curious about MRT food sensitivity testing for yourself, I'll put a link below the video where you can book a free discovery call with me to find out if it's right for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.